And greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth, and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Tom Hartman here with you. And I am pleased to have and honored, as always, to have on the line with us Congressman Peter DeFazio, uh, brilliantly representing the 4th District of Oregon, um, one of my home states, <laughs> many. And Congressman, welcome back. Hey, Tom, how many home states can you have? I, I, well, I'm, I'm working on five. All right. <laughs> I'll stick with one. I, I, yo, that's good. You're, you're representing uh, Oregon. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the TPP and, and uh, all this sort of thing, but before we get to that, there's two things that are uh, at the very top of the news that I just wanted to mention. The first is uh, Roseburg is in your congressional district, Roseburg, Oregon, where this shooting happened last week. I wanted to extend our consolation uh, and our condolences and, and, and best wishes to everybody there and to you. I know this has got to be a difficult one for you. And I was just wondering where that situation is at and what your thoughts are on it and where we should go as a consequence of it. Well, um, the governor, the two senators, uh, and I uh, were, well, the governor got to the community that evening for a vigil. Uh, we couldn't get there until the next morning. Uh, we spent last uh, Friday in the community. Um, met with first responders, met with, uh, you know, with uh, people at the hospital who did an incredible job, one hospital in that town, and they did an amazing uh, job with the mass casualty events, met with the staff, and a lot of them are pretty traumatized, um, and then met with uh, officials, local officials, and the community college, and we got some uh, a to-do list from the college on some things they need. Uh, one of which I'll be bringing up with the president tomorrow when he flies uh, to Oregon on Air Force One to have uh, private uh, meetings with uh, families uh, of those who were killed. Yeah. Okay. And and then the 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 second just quick question about you know top of the news stuff. Right now the Republican caucus is meeting to nominate a uh, uh, future Speaker of the House. Um, what do you know about what's going on and what do you think is going to happen? Well, I, I don't believe that uh, Kevin McCarthy will come out at today's meeting with 218 votes, which is what will be constitutionally required on the floor at the end of the month uh, when Speaker Boehner resigns. Uh, and I expect there to be a lot of demands and horse trading uh, going on in the interim for him to try to get to 218. Um, and that probably doesn't bode well because there's you know 40 or so ultra-right-wing nihilists uh, who are going to be demanding things like he, you know, support the government defaulting on its debt, uh, that he support closing down the government, uh, et cetera. And how far he can go down that path, I don't know. I guess the alternative would be he, you know, he takes, you know, that he somehow reaches across the aisle to Democrats and says, well, I'm going to do some things you want, which I don't think he's likely to do. Or the House gets hung up for a while trying to elect the Speaker. Oh, it's going to be an interesting one. Let's let's talk about trade. This is something you and I have been talking about. Uh, I I think for a decade. <laughs> it's, it seems anyway. It well, probably is. Than that for my case, yeah. I'm sure it is. NAFTA yeah. Or yeah. before. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I was complaining about NAFTA in '96. I just wasn't on the air. Right. <laughs> so, right. so anyway, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton has now come out and said that she opposes this deal as it is as of today, which was two days ago. <laughs> Um, uh, Bernie Sanders, of course, has opposed uh, these trade deals from the get-go, as have you. Um, I'm curious your thoughts on on TPP. You don't, have, you know, you, the, the politics of it. I can understand you may not want to jump into the middle of that, but um, just you know, where are we at with this? What's going on? What can we expect coming down the road? Well, amazing spin out of the White House. Uh, you know, right off the bat, uh, a couple of uh, wildlife groups saying this is going to be fabulous for the environment. Uh, there may or may not have added provisions that will bring about some enforcement of CITES and protection for uh, endangered species. Uh, I can say that and I, it's still a classified document, so what I've read I cannot be explicit, but let me just say what wasn't in the environment chapter when I read it previously and in the wildlife trafficking uh, chapter when I read it previously. Uh, the word shall didn't appear. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if it does appear when they release uh, this document, because I can't see any other reason uh, these groups would be saying this is going to have any effect. Same with labor uh, enforcement. Uh, there were, you know, they, again, the word shall seem to have been expunged from the dictionary uh, and the agreement. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they claim to have fixed uh, the most loathsome provision of this, which is to set up uh, private tribunals staffed by uh, corporate lawyers 
uh, who will make uh, unappealable, irrevocable decisions regarding our food safety, consumer protection, labor, environment, uh, and a whole host of other laws as whether or not they are uh, constitute trade barriers, uh, as in the recent decision where our labeling of country of origin of meat uh, was found to be a restrictive trade barrier. Now, we didn't have to repeal that law, and I didn't vote to repeal it, uh, uh, but uh, the Republicans did. The alternative is paying a fine of $2.3 billion a year uh, or to say, no, actually, we're going to renegotiate NAFTA, which President Obama, as candidate Obama, promised time to renegotiate and get rid of this trash. The EU has said, no way we're having that in any agreement with the U.S., and we don't know if Australia got their way. They said, we're not signing any agreement that gives that creates this corporate court uh, that can attack uh, our laws because already their uh, tobacco laws are being attacked under another agreement. Right, right. When you say that you didn't see the word shall in the environmental and in the, in the uh, uh, wi- wi- endangered wildlife and whatnot, is what you're saying that – if the word shall is not in there, then the, then the, then the provisions of that, those provisions, those favorable provisions of the treaty, at least from, you know, my point of view, your point of view, are merely advisory. They're not actually, I mean, actually, I legally, this isn't that, a treaty anyway. But, but, but let me say there was a lot of really fancy hortatory language uh, in the previous text, which I read, which all amounted to a hill of beans. In other words, it's largely advisory. It's not... Uh, it's not Portatory. enforceable. It's not law. Yeah. yeah. So you wow. should, or you might, or you might consider, or gee, if we beg. Right. Right. So how? How? You know, we've got Donald Trump attacking free trade deals. You've got Bernie Sanders attacking free trade deals. Um, what? And 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 I know the the position of the House Progressive Caucus, which is what uh, over ninety members now. Yeah, I, I don't know. I believe. Number I know you were you were you were there at the at the yep, beginning yep. of that thing. Bernie uh, and I helped found it. Yep. That's right. You and Bernie Sanders uh, helped create the House Progressive Caucus. Do you see a growing consensus, uh, particularly given that you've got a number of of Tea Party Republicans on the right who also don't like these free trade deals? Do you see a growing consensus that it's time to reconsider this uh, this notion, this bizarre notion of free trade that? that, uh, you know, arguably Richard Nixon first proposed when he went to China and then Ronald Reagan took up and then Bill Clinton turned into law, uh, you know, in 94 with, with NAFTA. Um, do you see a growing consensus that this is a mistake or are we stuck? I think there is uh, a growing uh, consensus. I mean, you know, when I remember when I voted against NAFTA, I had liberals in the street coming up and, you know, like sneering at me that I was a protectionist and, you know, this was going to be great and, you know, and then like a year later, they're saying, oh, you're right. There were no environmental provisions that were enforceable. There were no labor provisions, and we're losing hundreds of thousands of jobs. Oh, right. so the American people got schnookered big time by uh, Clinton uh, back uh, in, uh, in the early 90s. Uh, they kind of went along for the ride on the MFN for China and the WTO, but I think now you're seeing – very uh, much more awareness among the American people. I think in part it was brought about because the crooks on Wall Street destroyed our economy, middle class isn't doing well, and they say, well, what are the what are the biggest problems here? And you know, it's uh, you know, uh, crony capitalism on Wall Street and uh, and uh, dominance of uh, our economic policy by multi national corporations that are doing things that profit them but do not benefit the American people. Uh, there's a growing awareness. That's why Bernie's get turning out 20,000 people at the, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, the absolutely. There. And this is big on the agenda. Absolutely. Congressman Peter DeFazio, you're doing God's work, my friend. Keep it up. Thanks. Appreciate the opportunity. Always good to talk to you, Tom. Thank you, sir. This is the Tom Hartman Program.